Thunder. Thunder. Thundercats. Welcome back, bunglers, to the season finale of Thundercats Reviews, brought to you by the Radical Retro Rewind Podcast. As always, I am your host, Radical Ryan Hunter, here with everyone's favorite brother and mine, David, for the finale of Thundercats Season 1. First of all, I really want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you, everybody, for listening and supporting us. But I can't believe we went through 64 episodes. I think that's pretty amazing. It only took two years. (laughs) Out of the three that we've been podcasting. I think it's great. I'm really excited. I'm really excited to dive in. I'm actually really excited to see what's coming up in the future. I know when we had talked with Zach about how, particularly in Europe, they didn't get the newer seasons, like this is going to be very quote unquote foreign, ha ha ha, to maybe some of the listeners that didn't grow up watching that part of it, which... But even for us, David, I feel like we saw season one much more than... That was it. That was that was the gold standard and the rest was just filler because there, I, I feel like there was a lot of people that were not as keen on the new Thundercats as... Definitely. Definitely. Even so, but... So, David, with that being said, yes, we want to thank you all who have been here since the beginning. Craig, Matesh, and family, Zach, and of course our lovely Leah, and everyone who's written in the last few months who've just joined us. Thank you so much. We do have an amazing future for Thundercats for you planned out. I mean, I think we will be getting through Thundercats much faster with our new method come January, so... So, I mean, double the Thundercat, double the pleasure, double the fun with double mint gum. That's right. Let's get into our first episode because we are reaching the end of the season and the end of 1985. As always, thank you to the Thundercats Wikipedia for the synopsis and trivia we might be using. The first episode today, David, is The Shifter. Episode 64 of season one with the original air date of December 19th of 1985. Inside Castle Plundar, Vulture Man has just finished creating a device which can shift people into others' bodies. And he uses it to swap Panthro and Snarf's bodies who are alone at Cat's Lair. That's the basic premise of this, David. Please, Vulture Man, find me a young, hot, <laughs> muscular man to put my brain, my my essence into. Where does he actually come up with these devices? Uh, first of all, with? this is a very much the format that we saw before when he did the voice thing, where he's he's sitting at a table, like, well, I just came up with something new. Let's see if we can. Pl- I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal it to the unappreciative, ignorant mutants that I hang out with. And they're and, still and they're still questioning. And they, every and they move. still doubt him. They yeah. They Every still time. What? Cut out that racket! Oh, you're just in time to see my new invention, Sly. Huh? What is that thing? Some kind of noise maker? It's the shifter! It shifts people into each other's bodies. <laughs> I just switched Snarf and Panthro. What nonsense! What do you mean? I mean that I've put Snarf's feeble mind in Panthro's powerful body. And all Panthro's skills in Snarf's useless carcass. I believe he's lost his mind. Yes. Lost my mind, have I, Sly? Ah, Allow me to give you a demonstration. You have to understand that's got to make somebody crazy because that would make me crazy. In fact, I've had that in my life where you're always doing, 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 but people still question, but you're the one who did it all for them already. You know, like you- it's actually brought up, David. Slide says, I think he lost his mind. Yes. And I'm like, you've been saying Vulture Man lost his mind for a long time, Sly. But although, David, you know how crazy he gets. Remember, you remember his inner dialogue monologue with the super potion, cawing like a crazy man. Him and Mumronica have these very interesting. <laughs> 
screams. Oh my god, sound Outburst. screams off. So he does use it initially. So this swaps people's. I guess they're. I don't know if it's just mental or but or not. But 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 you got to give it to this machine too. The range he's shooting it from, like from the table, like you're saying, at Castle Plundar, and it it shoots the cat's lair, which is thirty minutes away by tank. So the range on this machine is fantastic. And then we get the plot line of Snarf and Panthro working in the cat's lair and basically, Snarf, you're useless. <laughs> and I really didn't like that. And you know what? Here's the thing. Panthro never really talks like this. Panthro though. has a way about him that he can insult you and make it like your your Uncle Bob or something <laughs> or some uncle that's like, says something <laughs> off and yeah. you're like, oh, yeah. that's just him. Like, he's like, oh, ho, ho. you know, like it's you don't like you don't want to immediately jump on down his throat. But how dare you say that to me? Kind of a thing. It's like no nonsense. Panther is very no nonsense, very cut and dry. You can't do the job. You can't do the job. It's not that he's trying to be mean, but it's still it was mean. We've been switched. What? I've got your body. <laughs> and I've got yours. How did it happen? I don't know. But I can guess who's behind it. This is the premise of this whole episode, which again, we talk about the moral aspect of it again, where it really stimulates me is the fact that this is quintessential, put yourself in someone else's shoes and walk a mile in those shoes and see what it's like for them. And maybe you'll have a different op- difference of opinion on how you judge somebody else, right? A thousand percent. It's the Freaky Friday syndrome. A matter of fact, this should have been called Freaky Friday. I think what is it because he has to reach on a ladder snarf he can't reach high because he's so short or something like that that was i don't know it was very strange no he says you can climb up the ladder there's also snarf who has some phobias and fears plus he's he's older he's a little more lazy he doesn't want to necessarily go the extra mile but I also i'm not think fond of snarf. heights either though honestly i know i know me either but you do what you got to do at the same time i love the animation sequence they use when the bodies are swapped david and you get that back to back a light show i think it's, it was a really creative idea of showing the essence of two people going into each other really cool shot so we get the swap we also cut back to castle plundar and slide and jackman refuse to believe vulture man and then he uses the shifter on them <laughs> in spite even though he hasn't found a way to reverse the process that is such vulture man rushing i came up with something and he just rushes to use it i don't know if it's gonna maim you i don't know if it's gonna remove all your flesh i don't know if it's gonna open up a black hole that's gonna engulf this whole planet and kill everything who cares CERN. So he, CERN. He uses the shifter on them. After squabbling with each other, they realize that they have swapped bodies, David. And Jackalman says, I feel so slimy. <laughs> it slides body. This is an outrage. <laughs> I feel so slimy. Watch it, Jackalman. This scrawny body of yours is no bargain. Yes. So is he always like, I mean, I guess he's a lizard, but like, I wonder if he is actually wet and clammy all the time to go with his asthma. Probably. (laughs) I would imagine. Well, I guess that's it. That's how his body keeps his skin. It's he's like a frog, basically. Yeah, he is like a frog. Okay, so then the mutants realize that it's more important to use the opportunity to attack the Thundercat. So they head to Cat's lair in the flying machine. Is this when Monkey and runs after it and he's kind of hanging on to the chicken feet? And he's, he just runs after it. The chicken feet kind of walk for me, off. Wait for me. Climbs up like, like a monkey. In the meantime, you have Panthro and Snarf going to Castle Plundar to confront the mutants. Are the other Thundercats in the feline or as well? Because we really just get Lion-O at this point, I think, home. I mean, wouldn't you have communicated to everybody oh, I what's did. going on? This is this is definitely one of those plot things that they do. I call it the sitcom thing yes. where, again, we talked about this over and over again. Monica likes this person. Chandler loves this person, but they don't tell each other, blah, 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 and then leave it up to fate, and then the other person starts dating somebody else. Remember this, listeners. If you're going on some sort of a long journey, or there's something going on, 
someone, tell somebody, tell a friend, tell multiple friends, tell a family Share member, a trusted, a trusted member of society, anybody. Don't think that this is a good idea to go out on your own because the bottom line with this is Lionel could have went with Panthro and Snarf, Snarf. And, and actually helped take care of this problem. But anyway, because didn't we learn that Panthro put communicators in all of their weapons too, so they could have communicated with each other. Back at Cat's Lair, like David said, Panther and Snarf are struggling with their switched bodies and trying to figure out what happened to them. They decide to seek the help of their friends and head out to the Thunder Take, but are unable to properly control the vehicle and end up perched on top of the bottomless chasm. So they are trying to communicate with them? I didn't get that from it. I got, he said, if I remember correctly, what was said was, I have an idea or I know where this, why, why this happened and who did yeah, this. Yeah, I thought they thought Let's it was, go. yeah, I thought they thought it was them. It was mutants, the mutants or Mumra, or yeah, whatever. So, mm, I don't know. I'm not buying that. David, because honestly, I don't care if Snarf doesn't know how to drive. He could press a switch. He pressed a switch before to communicate with somebody. So, I agree. But again, we wouldn't have had the plot. So, so the mutants flying above spot the tank and shoot at it, causing it to fall into the ledge inside the bottomless chasm. Snarf in Panther's body becomes trapped under the thunder tank, while Panther in Snarf's body manages to free himself and head straight to the cat's lair. And at this point, Snarf is in the tank, turned upside down. He's like, use your tail! And we see that Panther's able to use the tail to climb and then he's like, I'll never... Is this when he says it? I'll never... Um, or later no, on. No, I didn't. Like, in other words, it's... I like, in other words, he's finding it useful to have a tail. Three hands instead of one, I guess. Use your tail, Panthro! Your tail! I mean, my tail! I guess. Hey, it works! I'll never underestimate you again! So meanwhile, Lionel and Wily Cat are spaceboarding that's right in the forest. And he's alerted by the Sword of Omens. And he only sees Panthro turned upside down in the Thunder Tank. It Does, doesn't show, like, the body switching. Which would have been so helpful. But, you know, the, the sword's like, you're lucky I even went off. <laughs> I don't do this lately, so. Da -da -da! So they head over there and they hear Snarf's voice, right? And they keep saying, where's Snarf? Is this a joke? And the Star and Panther's body is like, nope. And David, I was so impressed. I mean, I know Lionel was strong, but he freaking picked up the Thunder Tank. Like, it was nothing, nothing. I know. Thank you, Lionel. <laughs> This is when he disappears on his his camping adventure. Lionel frees Snarf and they zoom towards the lair in the Thunder Tank. I thought it was funny that Wily Cat decided to bring the spaceboard in his hand and fly on the spaceboard because honestly he could have jumped in the back of the Thunder Tank and placed the spaceboard there. But all right, they're going from this we're coming at you with different vehicles kinds of thing. And he uses the other spaceboard actually as a shield. So that was good. Mm -hmm. They make it towards the lair and the mutants are already wrecking havoc on their fortress when the cats try to stop them. Vulture Man uses the shifter on Lionel and Wily Cat. With their bodies switched, neither Lionel nor Wily Cat are able to use the Sword of Omens. I thought this is really cool to hear. I always find it interesting that the Wily Cat was wielding the Sword of Omens trying to summon it and then him inside Lionel's body. So here's a funny thing. So the mutants immediately go right back into primal mode and start destroying the like, rip, leave nothing but the bones. <laughs> rip everything out. Rip everything. Smash everything. Truly. Graffiti. Throw some paint on there. Like, they just want to destroy the place. Monkey and defecate on, on the control panel. <laughs> like, everything, uh, they're just destroying this place. And I love the fact that Vultureman's gun not only can change people, but it also is a, an assault weapon. I mean, God, you're right. They destroy this place. Do you think it's actually in real life that this would be the case, that Lion you know, wouldn't be able to because the sword wouldn't. Yes. You do. Okay. Okay. So it's not like the charmed formula where Paige and Phoebe switch bodies and they have each other's powers. It's well, it's, the... that's different. They're bonded by the power of three and their, their magic is kind of interwoven with each other and it's in their blood. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I think that the Sword of Omens is more of a spiritual thing as opposed to just a blood rite. Imagine it's like Jaga and someone like in the stone, like almost like the sorceress watching. At this point, Lionel's like let me try right so he decides to use the, the larinets from the kit and cat that they use and he kind of like elevates himself up to cat in Lido's body and he grabs the sword and they do thunder thunder th 
Thundercats Ho. Quick, Wily Cat! Give me the sword! Thunder! 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 Thundercats! Ho! It's not working! It's useless, Cub! Give it to me! You try it, Wily Cat! Thunder! 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 Thundercats! Ho! <laughs> the sword doesn't work! <laughs> hey! I'm getting to like the idea of having a tail! We'll have to do it together, Wily Cat! Thunder! 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 Thundercats! Ho! This is when they're in the flying machine still, and Monkey is like, Shoot the sword, Nature Man! Shoot the sword! But shooting the sword actually <laughs> creates a whole bunch of problems, because then Vulture Man and Monkey and get swapped, and honestly, the two of them going back and forth in that flying machine was hysterical. There's a point where doesn't he, like, kick him? They kick each other in the back of the... the yeah, they're the... Just, their legs are flailing, they're jumping up and down... They they have no idea, and Vulture Man's like, push up, monkey, I push up, and he's no, he's like, pull back the lever, <laughs> and he's like, no, not forward, you idiot, back, back. <laughs> crazy because we know monkey and flies it's not like he's a helpless like buffoon ah! Ah! the gun has backfired ah! i can't fly this thing vulture man ah! Ah! pull the control stick If Vulture Man doesn't give me back my body, I'll I'll grind his beak to bird seed. Yes, retreat back to Castle Plunder. And then he pulls the lever off, which is very <laughs> monkey, and start breaking everything again. And they're going back and forth, back and forth. The, the the flying machine is flying back and forth. Cut to Chitara and Wily Kit. Chitara's picking candy fruit from a tree, and Wily Kit is picking flowers. Unfortunately, they leave the basket of candy fruit. I would have just picked it up if I could have, but couldn't she have just eaten one on the road? <laughs> <laughs> Vulture Man turns his attention on the Sword of Omens and fires the shifter at the Eye of Thundera, but his plan backfires when the Eye uses the shifter beam to revert the Thundercats to their original bodies and swap Vulture Man and Monkey and unable to pilot the flying machine, Monkey and crashes it and the rest of the mutants beat a hasty retreat. So really, honestly, I gotta tell you, for the end of the season, I mean, it's a fun plot for sure. I kind of feel like they were like maybe just just meh. I had a it, it was it wasn't fantastical. No, not for the second to last episode of the season. I know they're not thinking of it like that, honestly, because 65 episodes, again, bunglers. This is not the same as like even cartoon, like regular cartoons that were in syndicated every day. Like, He-Man, Shira, Thundercats, they were daily shows. So you have to do 65. Because yeah, I was saying 64, but yes, it's six, 65 episodes, but we went from a format of only doing one yes, episode yes. to two. At so. a time, Oh my so God. trying to like figure that out basically yes it is a total of 65 by the way this is the first episode in which lion rides the space board chitara has done it earlier in the episode the time capsule another unique thing about this episode is that it shows the thunder kittens engaging in separate activities wily cat is shown joyriding with lion while wily kid is picking flowers with chitara and fruit normally the twins are inseparable and always go about their tasks 
together. I think that's okay. I think they could do some separate time. I think they should. It's how you personally grow. By the way, David, did you notice the infamous Samuel Flange outtake was recorded yes, during I this did. episode? I did. <laughs> and keep your foot off that blasted Samo Flange. And keep your foot off that blasted Samo Flange. What the f is a Samo Flange? Samo. I have to do that again. And keep your foot off that blasted <laughs> Sam <Sabbath man. laughs> I have to do it again. Let's check in, by the way, what David Crichton's Hear the Roar, the unofficial and unauthorized guide to the hit 1980 series Thundercats says about this episode. David, he gives it four stars, which, all right. That's my <laughs> opinion. The opening is full of humor, action, and a clever use of the swapped bodies device commonly found in children's dramas. While similar to the early episode of Divide and Conquer, the shifter narrowly outperforms it, utilizing the concept to better effect with clever use of parallels through the episode. It is no coincidence that Panthro and Snarf are the chosen candidates for the transformation offering as they do a great potential for the difference in both temperament and physicality, which are explored well. The same is true for Slythe's body swap with Jackalman. Both examples work nicely, and the idea is is brilliantly executed with scenes featuring Snarf in Panther's body driving the Thunder Tank and Panthro in Snarf's body using nunchucks and karate kicks. Oh yeah, that was a great scene scene. <laughs> Panthro in Snarf doing the, the nunchucks. This is really a visual episode and the shifter sequences are well designed and executed. Definitely agree. The dialogue and the characteristics on display in the shifter are remarkably acute given that Malix, this guy who wrote this episode, it was his first episode of Thundercat, his one-liners serve all episode. While introducing Vultureman's harsh appraisal of the situation, all Panthro skills in Snarf's useless carcass, it also is nice to have the mutants revealed to be responsible for the device only after the Thundercats have already fallen foul to its efforts. So the writer says that the shifter was the first script I ever wrote and got paid for. It was a test run of sorts given to me thanks to the generosity of Peter Lawrence. Peter taught me a great deal about the writing and I always looked up to him and his work. The shifter was my attempt at humor. The idea of Snarf and Panther swapping bodies was irresistible to me. And of course, not exactly an original concept. At first, I wanted to call the show Shifting Salts, but Peter said the title sounded too much like a name of a, <laughs> of a laxative. I have to agree. <laughs> Shifting salts. When I thought of the idea of the shifter, the first characters that came to mind were Panthro and Snarf. They are the complete opposite. At first, they are horrified at the switch, but they learn to respect and eventually use their new bodies. The accidental swapping of Slythe and Jackalman was just an introduction to the idea the smarter Slythe being saddled with the body of a lower Jackalman is the ultimate insult. As for the Samoflange line, I have to admit that probably came from Peter. He was a big fan of adding technical non nonsense to dialogue and was in fact the king of that when we were on Peter Pan and the Pirates. Oh, I remember that. They had a cartoon, Peter Pan and the Pirates. That show made heavy use of the pirate slang, which though authentic was unintelligible to nearly everyone who watched the show, pirates excluded. So David, what did you think of the shifter? It sounds like we kind of both were like, okay, fun. Eh. I feel bad now. This is his first page gig and I'm like, <laughs> not enthused about it i mean you know we, we could only say so much we can only say so much i don't know why you're so irresistible <laughs> jessica zimson yeah yeah i mean i it was a, it was a solid episode i liked it but it wasn't like to me the the upper echelon of it but again where i'm always used to the formula of the last couple of episodes or at least the last one last episode or is the like cliffhanger to bring you back for the next season mm -hmm. but that, that's also judging a cartoon by live action today's or, stand, or, or in today's yeah, stand, live too. movies and and t television so and not a cartoon but yeah i mean i don't want to seem unenthused about it i actually like oh no, no especially on our grand finale i liked the idea of them learning about each other and finally appreciating but yes. you also see that snarf still appreciated his own body so he knows who he is yes that's to me is also someone who is accepting of themselves their flaws who they are and not trying to be anything else but if i was in panther's body i'd be like i'm feeling myself i'm feeling myself, <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling myself. it would have been silence of the lambs dancing in the mirror no, i was thinking it would be like panther 
Astro's been inside there for s- Oh no, it, oh, cause no, Starf's in the body. Starf's been in that bathroom for a long time in Panthro's body. With that being said, David, let's get to the finale. Dun dun dun. Grand, grand finale. Thundercats will be back after these messages. Thundercats are on the move. Thundercats are loose. Thundercats are loose and you can grab them with the Thundercats album and sticker packets. The stickers are scenes from the Dynamite TV series. Collect them, trade with friends, and finish the album quicker. Included is a full-size poster to complete. A packet of six stickers is 25 cents. Collector's album is 35 cents. Thunder, 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 thundercats. Thundercats are loose, and you can grab them when you stick with Panini. Thundercats are back now. Episode 65 of season one with the original air date of December 20th of 1985. It's so funny because you out there listening to this will be listening to this in the last week of December. So this is a parallel in some ways. Unless we've lost you in the last episodes. <laughs> Speed it up, Oliver. So, David, this is fond memories. Mumra creates a museum with paintings and statues that come to life as the Thundercats' more formidable foes. As Lion-O and Snarf prospect for Thumdrillium, Mumra turns into Dr. Dontome and lures lion to the deadly museum. Preying on his feline... What did he say? Preying on his feline vanity? Yes! <laughs> Which is what? What? You know, cats do like you, themselves. Christina Aguilera. It is my vanity. I'm not cocky. I just love myself. His feline vanity. If anyone has vanity, I'm thinking it's Mumra. But yeah. let's get into it, David. Mumra basically makes an arena. He calls it a museum, but he decides to scan Third Earth. This is Man Max Thunderdome. Honestly. Tina Turner, this is <laughs> Master Blaster runs Bada Town. Mumra <laughs> runs Bada Town. We don't need almost looked like to like the lion king's rock where mufasa like it happened on like what do they call it pride rock below it he says this is a perfect place and bam he makes paintings in the form of i mean grand paintings it's so funny because years later the legend of zelda n64 zelda ocarina of time did this with ganon david where he would come out of the paintings between that and they had shadow link even down to the second Legend of Zelda on NES. There's a Shadow Lion-O as well. I like these Zelda parallels. Mumra makes the arena. <laughs> this cave is the perfect place to set my trap for Lion-O. I will assemble all his most formidable enemies in this one place. And here, I will finally destroy that wretched Thundercat! I shall start with Sly and the power of his mind-bending warp gas grenade! <laughs> and if that's not enough, I'll add Spidera, queen of eight legs. <laughs> then I shall summon Safari Joe, the most formidable big game hunter the Earth has ever seen. <laughs> Even a lion will be able to overcome the combined power of these opponents. But just to make sure, I'll summon one more. Retaro, the greatest of mutant warriors. <laughs> But 
much. How to entice lion over here? I shall appeal to his thundercat vanity. Yes, a tribute from the grateful, wretched creatures of third earth. And I said, David, where is he getting these villains from? He's picking them like it's a video game. I'll take Slive in his gas. He's like swiping through. Is that really Slive? Is it like a a, a shadow of Slive? So here's a few cool things that I noticed. One, he was my mother ever living. And when he went into this cave, he went back to his mummy form. Which I didn't understand either. And then he created this collection. Now, And then he was like, just for good measure, I'll do another <laughs> one after three here, but I'm going to do another one ah, 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 just because I can. Honestly, though, you know, I would have done them all. I would have had everything. I would have had if I every villain. But it every seems villain. like he's learning from his lesson, though, actually. Well, this is very much like, in a way, when he took all the battle robots and stuff, he got them from the junkyard yes. that's outside of the pyramid, apparently. I will bring back the the weapons of the past it was actually a really novel idea i liked it he did the greatest hits basically of season one in a way too it's like a way to call back to everything that's happened without calling back there's a few things and then the ancient spirits of evil transform me to whatever docile dr dom dog of the, the oceanic plug you know mumra loves his titles he had to add in the guardian yeah. of the oceanic plug. highly decorated marine <laughs> biologist also psychology major and David, you can't forget that he's also a scholar and a gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> According to Wiley Kent. And who better to invite Lionel to this tribute than innocent Dr. Downtown? Yeah. Ancient spirits of evil transform into Dr. Bone Tone, Keeper of the Oceanic Flag! Out of all the people, I would have taken a burble. Or he's done this before. The unicorn keeper. Were you shocked to see Dr. Dome Tome out of the... Like I'm saying, I mean, we really honestly do have... We have Willa. We have Hachiman. We have... Husta, I, think, I think that he just pulled it out because it would have... It, it Maybe in his mind, it, it would have taken him off guard because it's a weird person to be out of the water. and. Oh, yeah. Like, okay. And I would like, oh, wow. Who is that? Why are you here? Like, it kind of like mess with him a little bit, maybe? Well, I mess with me because he's outside with Snarf looking for this Dundranium and all of a sudden he's in the trees, Dr. Dome Tome. Oh, Herky, come with me. I got a museum for you. <laughs> My fatigue is so masculine, I can't help myself. But as I don't know, he's like... You know, the people of Third Earth have come to me, and we're, we want to really thank you, Lionel. Come, 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 come. Greetings from under the sea, Lionel. Dr. Dome Tone, what brings you to the surface? I hope the great oceanic plug is okay. Oh, yes. All's well beneath Third Earth, but I made a special trip up here to invite you to an exhibition. An exhibition? No, a tribute to the Thundercats, and especially to their young leader, Lionel. A tribute? To the Thundercats? To me? Yes, Lionel. An exhibition organized by the grateful creatures of Third Earth. Follow me. Well, I got a feeling something bad's going on, and I think Lionel is in the thick of it. <laughs> so I like the premise of it. I really enjoyed it. I think this is old hat from Mumra in the sense like he did the all the war robots and stuff that Thundercats had. But it was certainly unique. I would have done a lot more paintings. He did trap him, though, at least in an enclosed location as opposed to the robots of the past. This is a little step up. Yes, but more paintings. Although maybe he had a commission those from Etsy and he had to wait. And he's just like, oh, I'm still waiting for Mumra. <laughs> Mamrana, finish! <laughs> 
I told you I wanted a picture of Rotaro done immediately. Hey, David, I have to say, the whole time, Mumra has his fingers up like he's the maestro. He was pointing to the ceiling in this episode. He was really feeling himself. The whole time, every time he spoke, he pointed that fingers up. Yes! So, David, Lionel, like we said, walking on his knees come across Dr. Dome Tome. He was looking for Dundralium so low that he was crawling on his knees with his Dundranium, whatever. Dundralium, I mean, uh, detector. not Dundranium. Oh, yeah, the detector. We approach this cave, and he's like, this? This is it. This is the museum I'm taking you to. The Met. <laughs> I'm a curator. Yeah, if you got your student pass, you don't have to pay if you got the student pass, Lionel. <laughs> Look around. This is all for the Thundercats. For us? Why? You have fought the mutants and kept the evil Mumra at bay. We third earthlings built this museum to say thanks. <laughs> Wait, Dr. Domtone. There's danger here. So they go in, and honestly, this is one of my favorite mummer lines. Thank you on the last episode for giving me this. Do you really think the miserable people of this planet would make a museum for you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm digressing. He actually says something else. It was like similar to this. But basically, you really think they're going to make a museum for you? These unappreciative <laughs> Heathens that live on this planet, I hate every single one of you. I hate Willa. I hate the Bubbles. I hate the mutants. I hate the Thundercats. I hate the Brute Men. I hate the Unicorn Keepers. I hate everyone. Who else did we miss? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty damn good. Yeah, basically. Oh, Volos. No, Vulcans. Vulcans. Volos. And those stupid people that live underground that can't read books. I hate you all. Oh, those under-earth people. Those under-earth people. I will show you that I could put whatever I want in front of my pyramid. I am the head of the HOA. Well done, lion <laughs> I should have known all along. Did you really think that the miserable creatures of this planet would go to the trouble of building a museum just for you? Well, I thought that... That conceit will be your destruction! For now, you must fight me! I've fought you before, Mumra, and won. I'll win again. <laughs> Not after you get a taste of warp gas! So, this is the mighty Lion O. <laughs> this actually would have been a great thing to trap him there and just have him forced to listen to all his complaints. Let's start with the first crash of the, the spaceship. <laughs> $10,000. <laughs> Minimum payment due now. So he cues the first painting. Because he's still in Dr. Dome Tome form. He cues the first painting, which is Sly. It comes to life again. If these portals, because later on, they go into the paintings. Are they portals? Are they a representation of the... Well, I'm going to tell you right now. If this is just a magically created representation of these different things then mom it's better than really... the real thing <laughs> that's right baby that's what they say <laughs> Mumra really, really stepped his game up, and he used a lot of his, a lot more powerful than I thought for a while. Or is is it's slide at the table at, at the Castle Blundar, and he's been selected. You're up. It's time for the Laugh Olympics, Scooby Doo versus whatever the hell they had. So Slive uses the the Wimp of War gas. Does he say Wimp of War, <laughs> meaning no. you become a wimp? War. I thought it was Warp gas. 
I swear he said wimp of war because you kind of get like, oh, like afraid, like a kid. I thought he said wimp of war, guess. Maybe we'll say it in the description, actually. I am wrong. The first person to come to life is Safari Joe. Excuse me. Safari Joe does it again. But Lionel defeats him. The same thing happens with Rotaro. And then Lionel dishes out some treatment to him as well. That's what the synopsis is. Gives him some medicine, his treatment. <laughs> Seeing that things are not going his way, Mumra reveals his true self. Then he takes the warp gas, so it's not the winds of war, the wimp of war, <laughs> the wimp of war gas from the painting of Slide and throws it at Lionel. The effects of the gas fill the brave, courageous Thundercat with fear and scurries away. Meanwhile, Snarf, who's been searching for Thundranium with Lionel, who was unable to get inside the cave, fetches the other Thundercats because David, he says, I feel like there's something wrong as soon as he left. Mm -hmm. Like he could see through Dr. Dome Tom, I'm surprised. Well, Snarf is, is has that has that bond, that unspoken bond with Lionel. He's like, is that really that gentleman? <laughs> Driving the Thunder Tanks, the heroes plow into the cave, but upon seeing the paintings, deduce that Lionel must be in one of the paintings. A rogues gallery. Mumra's gallery, if I know anything about it. Lionel must be here somewhere. We'll get a head start. Hey! Wait. While the Thunder Kittens enter the paintings of Safari Joe, the rest of the cats enter Spidera's paintings. Now everyone, Spidera, if you don't remember, is the gigantic spider. Mm -hmm. Much like the one from the My Little Pony movie that you could tickle with a reed. Bushy, bush, bush. bushy. <laughs> yeah, the bushies. <laughs> he likes you. Oh, that's my bushy. Why do you think they decided for Wily Kit and Wily Cat to go to Safari Joe? That to me um, made no sense and they took the Thunder Thunder Tank, Chitara, Panthro, and Tigra, and the Thunder Tank for a spider. And they said, Safari Joe, who caught them all, captured them, put them in cages. Wily Kit, Wily Cat, you go. I didn't think his chances against the kittens were good anyway, Panthro. <laughs> they're, they're treacherous. They'll kill you if they have to. Then that one over there, she just like Chitara. She'd steal the gold <laughs> from your filling in your mouth if she could. <laughs> if those paintings are alive, the odds are, Lionel's trapped in one of them. There's only one way to find out. You don't mean... We're going to have to break into them. Tigra, Snarf, you come with me and Chitara. We'll take the Thunder Tank into Spidera's kingdom of webs. <laughs> I don't like this. Wily Cat, Kit, you take Safari Joe. So they go into the paintings, waiting to deliver the final blow to them. Mumra transforms into the evil version of Lionel. This is a red No, line. but I love this. I love this. He's there, and a statue comes down, and it says, The former Lord of the Thundercats. Oh, Lionel. my God. Mumra was busy. He even is, his dreams are so grand that he had to make that the former. He's like in that Lionel Richie. Hello, is it me you're looking for? <laughs> He's been painting. He's molding. <laughs> He's, Clay. he's sculpting, he's sculpting the, the bust of Lionel. He's like, you know, this is pretty good for a blind man. So the former, yes, David, the former leader of the Thundercats in statue form. But guess what? He's all red. Lionel, one time Lord of the Thundercats. One time, we'll see about that. You light my art collection. Free my friends from those pictures, Mumra! Oh no! Do you like the all red ensemble? I thought Lionel was pretty good in red, but Lionel looks good in everything. <laughs> and nothing. <laughs> If only. That, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's stuff out there like that, Ryan. I'm sure there is. I liked this, and this, to me, was a really good ending episode. This lived up to the hype of it, just for the, the doppelganger thing. Oh, you like that the best. The doppelganger is very powerful. Because it says he's equal to Lionel in every aspect, it says, yes. But, I, however, I didn't understand, like, the copy of the Sword of Omens thing. Well, again, where did Mumra come up with this painting skill? Do you see this, Lionel? <laughs> Bob Ross. Do you see the happy <laughs> little tree behind Spidera? 
Oh my god, a rogue. Bob Ross. David, I forgot to mention, he calls it a rogues gallery. A rogues gallery of everything you've seen. So David, yes, Red lion fights the real lion and he puts up quite a fight until the real lion shows him his reflection in the Blade of the Sword of Omens, sending the mummy flying in fear. Did Jaga come? It has my strength, my cunning. It is my equal in every way. Yes, lion It is just like you. An evil twin. Your mirror image. Think. Yes, and what do you see in the mirror? Your own reflection, Mumra. Back to your pyramid, mummy. Welcome back. It's about time you got here. <laughs> back to your pyramid, mummy. The blast blows Mumra out of the cave, flying out in his mummy form. He shot out like Team Rocket and friggin' Pokemon into the sky. Blew him away, David. He blown away. So <laughs> Mumra off again. <laughs> To protect the world <laughs> from devastation. <laughs> to, 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 to attack their earth with devastation. Yeah. To take over Burble's nations. You say, yeah? Mom and Ra. Jesse, James. Mommy, Mom Rana. Mumra, Mumrana. So, by the way, we didn't we didn't mention that the Thundercats actually go into the paintings and get stuck in there, and you kind of see like the Safari Joe holding up a sack with the two Thunder sack. Kittens. Yes, two sack. Spider. I don't think how they just gave up. They went to Spider. She started shooting webs at them. They're like, oh, we're trapped. Uh. You know, we brought the Thunder Tank and three of us, but uh. they should have like used the Thunder Tank's things to, you know, the claws to chop up or do something. Anything. Please. It's kind of like they just gave up. Yes, this is supposed to be. Lion O show, I guess, but still, they gave all up eyes on me in the center of the ring, just like a circus. When Mumra cracks that whip, I'm gonna trip just like a circus. Tiger should have cracked the whip. Mm. You know, Lion O uses the sword to pull out his friends from the paintings. I mean, Rataro was there, we forgot to mention. He had, like, in the painting, a boomerang, but then he did pull out his two double swords at one point with the eyes. Which are cool. So the episode reuses footage from the previous episodes of Queen of Eight Legs and Safari Joe. This episode is unique in that it has Mumra changing into two forms. First, Dr. Dome Tome, and then the Red Clone of lion -O. Evil Red lion that Mumra transforms into was produced as an 8-inch action figure by Bandai Toys as a exclusive in 2012. Despite Slive being one of the villains that Mumra includes in his museum, the mutant never comes comes to life and fights lion -O. Instead, he only uses his warp gas grenade. Was this the episode where some close-ups of Mumra were just hideous? Hideous. But we want that for our finale, David. We want our mummy to look bleh. So let's see, before we get into our wrap-up, David, let's see. Fond Memory was given four stars by David Crichton in the Hear the Roar book. The closing installment of Thundercats' debut series is a mixed bag. While it is far from the best episode, it does successfully recap both what the show had represented up until this point and features some memorable villains. It is a story of vanity, and in the case of Lionel's beloved, Belief that his actions could be commemorated by the people of Third Earth. Come on, I could. I don't believe, believe that. that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, David. From one David Crichton. to another, 
he, he, David Crichton, he was taken aback by the fact that Dr. Domtome came out of nowhere and was like, we want to show you something. And then when Mamra gave his big speech about- This was the feline he, vanity? Yeah, that he said to him, I, I thought maybe- like maybe they were trying to be nice like he was trying to say like maybe i don't know like, it wasn't like yes i deserve that so i Never. don't agree i 100 percent. that is 100 percent absolute i guess if that's what the writer intended but in my heart that is 100 percent not true we're, we're 65 episodes in lionel lionel has completely changed his overzealous behavior from being a child definitely so Definitely. I don't agree with this man. I don't agree with this vanity thing. So it says that the most memorable, enjoyable aspect of fond memories is Mumra's disguise as an evil lion complete with fetching red attire. The ensuing battle between the two is spectacular and works well on screen. Lee Schneider also offers some enjoyable dialogue throughout, including Mumra's scathing attack on lion Oh, here it is. Did you really think the miserable creatures of this planet would go to the trouble of building a museum just for you? lion staggered reaction is well judged and speaks volumes. I don't know. I thought it speaks volumes the opposite way, like you're saying. Essentially, Fond Memories is something of a recap of events and formulas of the first 65 episodes of Thundercats. To this end, it works well, and it's a worthwhile opportunity to use the approaching one finale time, before things are given a reshuffle as the Thundercats return for their second season. After all that, I'm all in, suggests Snarf in the closing moments, and the Thundercats would indeed take a short break before returning in a new direction. Direction. And then the writer, Lee Schneider, says, The script started out in a purely, uh, oh, let me see. I pitched all of my ideas to the producers. Since I knew they were reaching episode 65, I wanted to find something that they would buy without hesitation. Because we all believed that Thundercats would end with episode 65, would instantly be forgotten, and we all would be looking for new jobs. It would be cool, I thought, to have written the final episode of the series. 65 was something of a magical number in the animation world even sitcom seasons back then only went on for 22 episodes yeah hoping for a successful sale of my idea my first thought was to see if i could save the producers money god we know that lynn lipton (laughs) but by repurposing recycling and therefore re showcasing previous episodes not only would it provide an, an honorable way to end the first season but it would also give the viewers a retrospect of the best set of character design fond memory takes place in a museum and i'm dead certain i ripped this off from an old movie i saw but i can't remember now anyway the thrifty strategy worked and the producers liked my idea as i started working from my outline i realized that i had the opportunity opportunity to use a very human trait of Lionel's very feline character. What is with this feline? <laughs> Heroes are subjected to vanity. Do we really? I-, I didn't take this at all either, David. I'm gonna fight any I'm gonna fight anybody on this. That even again, the damn writer. That, that's what the writer is saying, but how how is it vanity? He basically stuttered over his words because he was like uh-uh. taken aback by the whole situation. Like uh 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 well maybe because you're telling me if I tell you Ryan, <laughs> all all the people that watch our podcast decided to send in pictures and i put them on the wall because they appreciate the podcast so much and you're like uh uh okay you have feline vanity ryan you bastard (laughs) and then be like you're so vain i think that's i'm sorry i I can't because i'm not the writer but that's a stretch that's a stretch for someone who really loves this and has watched it i don't believe it at all i think that that and when he he staggered over his words he was like i thought maybe like because he was convinced by dr dome tone because he's got pictures in front of him come on like are you gonna believe my word or your own eyes he had a camera phone he took pictures he wasn't like <laughs> oh look i'm gonna take a selfie now and be like oh bitches i'm the best he was like oh okay no sorry oh well maybe this is what they're talking about david maybe it's not vanity like that it says lino would want to defeat the villains he defeated before something like an athlete trying to break all of his records just in time of course lino realizes that his vanity isn't going to defeat the villains 
oh, they mean vanity, not in that sense that he's so great that the pictures, but vanity that he was fighting alone. Just in time, of course, Lionel realizes that his vanity isn't going to defeat the villains. He got, he got to call in the rest of the Thundercats, thereby reinforcing the Thundercats' code of conduct. By the way, having Lionel fight his evil twin in the episode is another science fiction concept that simply had to be exploited or else I would have to have my poetic license revoked. I don't think there's ever been a science fiction or fantasy series that did not use the evil twin concept somehow, and I wanted to be sure that Thundercats wasn't going to be the exception to that i still don't buy it if you're being attacked by a bunch of different things sometimes you're just reacting in the moment to protect yourself he's not gonna be able to call it and dr he's, don't he's not gonna be he, he, yeah the, who's behind him he's not gonna think that oh i i should immediately call the 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 things when someone's shooting at me you have to deflect it before you can call for the thundercat sorry david yes. not buying yes. wider man sorry <laughs> <Peter> Lawrence. <Peter> Lawrence. <laughs> i demand that you come on this show and hear me out david let's get to our final biggest bungler of the season. Bungra! You bungra! Once again, you have failed. You bungled it! <laughs> Their life Okay, it's time for the shifter and fond memories. Who are you giving the shifter bungler to? Panthro? Because he... <laughs> He bad no, snarf. That's not a bungle. That's just, no. That's just not putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. The bungle would be Vulture Man is bungled because he didn't have a way to reverse it. Because yes, we, uh, we eventually yes. knew something was like that was going to happen. But his, his disdain and hate for the mutants, he wouldn't care if they stayed in each other's bodies. But he would have to know that would create a problem for him. Eventually, Slive and um, and uh, Jackalman would come after him. Right? Didn't he say that, Slive? He better transform us back or I'm yeah. going to beat him up. That's a bungle. Not having a better plan of attack with the Thundercats is a bungle. Well, you're right. He just kind of just said, let me swap them at, at the table in Castle Plundar, not even leave. And then ev and everybody not having confidence in their own ability to do the most fundamental basic things like pull a lever and turn a wheel. <laughs> yeah. Is bungle on all of the people that were switched that had a problem. Pull a lever. That's so true. Pull a lever or press a button. And even if he pushed it when he pushed, like even with Monkey and pushed it forward, I would have said Monkey and pull it back towards me towards yourself and fix that yes, problem immediately David. right he could have just been like other way other way other way now that was a lot of bungles i think overall i don't know that's that's what i'm going with on that one actually i'm agreeing with you i think the plan wasn't it wasn't it was whatever just, it even was down like to random. shooting random exactly even down to shooting the sword of omens at the end which ended up causing them to be swapped and everything else and them to be back put back because the sword <laughs> i guess knew what to do then so i agree fond memories david who is our bungler because honestly i okay maybe more paintings and more sculpture but since this was evidently a budgetary <laughs> episode mummer was who was the bungler budget. the people that came with the concept of feline vanity <laughs> what? and that's and I, I said what i said <laughs> feline vanity it's my feline vanity cue christina aguilera maybe we should make our own song feline vanity <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm just not I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it because first of all, Lionel. Uh, it's not even. It's not even. I'm not defending Lionel's honor or anything. It doesn't make any sense. He's already gonna go out with you, David. He will already go out with you. You've debated him this even. whole season. No, <laughs> it's not even that. I just I don't agree with it. I think that that's a really weak. Mm -hmm. It's, it just doesn't it doesn't jive with everything i know about him he's grown obviously even when he did the whole thing with the 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 the, 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 the kittens about covering for them but yes giving them a stern talking to yes yes he has completely grown it's not about the vanity that he thinks he can take it on every single one of the thundercats does that because i feel like they're in the heat of the moment and yes he exactly. did call the thundercats when there was a time that he could get to it, instead of he's blocking Doctor Dome Tome from getting hurt while yeah, he's he being attacked, he actually shifted. He shifted while to, he's being to cover no, that is not that is not vanity thinking he can take on everything. Absolutely not. I'm sorry that that is a far far stretch, and I'm not. I am. I am not buying any Stockholm syndrome today, Patty Hearst. <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> 
feline right. dad. I know that cats get a bad name as my little baby is literally over my shoulder being an angel, Charlie. I know they give cats like bad names about whatever, but I've never heard of feline vanity as a thing. But evidently it's all around Third Earth. Mumra knew about it. <laughs> Peter Lawrence knows about it. No, I get it. I get it. And Lionel in the past has been that way because of his immaturity. I was going to say, isn't that just, isn't that just immature? Exactly. Like he went through all of the anointment trials and definitely grew. He's growing mentally. He's gro- He, I, I don't think he hesitates to call his friends ever. No. In fact, I just think he waits for the moment. He, he, he's being attacked. So he's trying to like, I'm sorry, you can't call, you can't call the Thundercats while you, a beam of lightning is being striking your body. You no. have to use the sword to shield yourself and then summon them. So no, I don't think. And then wasn't he shackled right after that? Like by uh, Safari Joe's Safari Joe line. Does clip, clips yeah. on his ankle to make him. Yeah. So no, no, no. There you had it. You sorry. had it. No. No, the There's biggest the bungler. bungler is everybody that said that. It's Mumra, Peter Lawrence, and David Crichton from Hear the Roar, the unofficial and other guy. Now, if I had to pick a character, <laughs> Ryan, what would you pick? Honestly, I thought I was going to be bungless because Mumra really did give it his all. I give my all <laughs> to have exactly. just one more night with you. Yes, he could have said, all right, I'll have every mutant come through the paintings and brute man and this and that, but it was pretty good plan, honestly. Besides him thinking that he had feline vanity too <laughs> and that the fact that he didn't turn into a woman for the final episode so mumra's getting the biggest bungler you could have been a woman i think he bungled he should have picked up more paintings <laughs> the crab man even, i mean even even if he went to like you know like a really trashy seaside part of california like venice beach and just had one of those caricature people draw some pictures he could put draw on some wall, pictures of that come up come to life what about even Hammerhand? yeah the ghost of Hammerhand and all these things i agree david more paintings more pa- more paintings and more more vanity. more how do you like them how do you like them so no that's it i'm Ooh. ending this series on an angry note i'm ending this season this is it david we've reached the end we've reached the end of season one what do you want to say to all your <laughs> all your people out there there is no such thing as feeling of it. No, I'm just kidding. What I want to say is I hope that people enjoyed themselves. That's ultimate. We, this is what, what we always say. I, I mean, I'm a broken record over the last couple of years. Like, I just really hope people enjoyed it. You know, as funny as I'm trying to be, I do, don't think there was feline vanity, but I'm, I, you know, of course. I'm. No, I don't think there was either. I'm playing around, but I hope people even enjoy that because I am passionate about, about the show. I'm passionate about how I feel about it. And it, to me, it didn't jive, for example, but ultimately I just hope people love it they want to come back and listen to us more they they keep sending in you know questions and mail and comments and just hopefully we can elevate ourselves which bunglers now that we have finished season one we would love to send out the thundercat signal to get a review we have not one review on our podcast that mentions thundercats do you want to be the first one out there you could be now that we finished season one. And if you're good, I'll put your painting up in a in a in a, <laughs> yeah. in a rock cave. You know, I do live where there's a bunch of mountains and stuff. I'll put yeah. it in a rock cave for you. You can come visit. I will tell you that you do not have feline vanity unless you're into that sort of thing. And then I yes, was just you gonna do. say we will take feline vanity because I would love a praise. I would love to hear how we're doing with this show because Podcast Vanity. I think podcast we're, we're vanity. I think you're gonna come back to the podcast, there's gonna be pictures of us and different things in different poses. <laughs> I would love of that <laughs> you've reached my arena a rogues gallery bunglers thank you for joining us from literally one episode to double episodes to now come january when you're getting twice a month new episodes we have a huge comeback in january we're doing five episode thundercats ho the movie one of matesh's favorites as well as the following five episodes of mumra lives that so that's 10 episodes of thundercats you're getting in january what 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 come, come again come again come again what'd you say 10 episodes come again 10 episodes two five parters of course we're gonna be doing one of our 
long marathon of an episode. You're not going to get five separate ones, but be prepared because you got a big, exciting January ahead. Thundercats is now going crazy. We are Thundercats crazy come the new year. And you never know, we might have some special guests. We, we will have special guests. I am definitely working with David to start possibly. We want to bring you some kind of merch that we could sell that's not going to be pulled. No copyright infringements. No copyright infringement. Maybe we'll call it Mummy from the Feline Vanity Show. And no one will ever realize it's Mumra. But let us know if there's something you want. If you're listening right now and you're like, I would love a Thundercats review, bungler, cup, tea set. Let us know. Fanny pack. I, I don't do gratuitous nudity. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some designs for you. Maybe we'll do some like burble gold sale Chitara shirts. I would love that. I would love that. Let us know. Thank you again. Have an amazing holiday if you are celebrating. Happy New Year because next week will be New Year's. If you're bringing in the New Year's with us, thank you. We definitely would love to see you in the new year. Thank you, Thundercats Season 1. Thank you for an amazing ride. I think we had such an, a blast actually recapping all of these episodes. And I think we're actually really looking forward to the second season because we are not as familiar with it. Like, things will probably be really new in, in a lot of ways. <laughs> Which is, which is really good, I think, for us. It's actually going to be a rediscovering for us as well. So, I mean, that's all we wrote this season. Please, again, follow along with us. Follow Universal Appeal 2020, one word for David on Instagram. Put the Radical Retro Rewind podcast on Instagram. And I have one thing to say, Ryan. Thundercats, ho! Who are you calling a ho? Bye, everybody. As always, I took my breath away without breathing. As, as always, I am your host, Radical Ryan Hunter. Okay, Berlin, take your breath away. Take my breath away.